The Canadian Pension Plan, CPP, affects every single Canadian. And in 2024, there's massive changes coming that you need to be aware of. On January 1st, 2024, phase two of CPP enhancements comes into play. And I'm gonna break down all the detail of this and how it's going to affect you both today as you pay into CPP and in retirement when you go to start drawing out of CPP. Does it affect you? How much more income will it give you? But how much is it costing you along the way? So let's start with the basics around CPP. CPP, the Canadian Pension Plan, is a mandatory contributory plan for all employees, all Canadians across the country. Now, if you're self-employed, you can opt out of it, but for the majority of you watching this video, you're contributing to CPP, your employer is also matching that contribution to CPP, and when you get anywhere between the age of 60 and 70, you have the ability to draw out of that CPP. The CPP covers everyone in Canada, except if you're in Quebec, then you have the QPP, which is very similar to CPP. I won't go through the differences here now, but there is that contribute plan, whether it's CPP or the QPP. And one thing to keep in mind is that the Canadian Pension Plan is financed by both you, the employee, and your employer. So when you go pull money out of your CPP, remember that about half that contribution was your money going in and half was the employer for your retirement benefit down the road that you may not really be seeing or understanding today. So what is the CPP enhancement? So starting back in 2019, they rolled out an enhancement or an increase to CPP payments. So back in 2018, an employee would pay 4.95% of their wages into CPP up to a maximum, and the employer would match 4.95%. That has scaled up over time to 2023 being 5.95%. So this current year, um, if you've made the most to max out CPP, which is $66,600, I'll go through that here in a second, but you would have paid in 5.95% of your wage up to that 66,600, and your employer has also done the same. So any Canadian over 18 that's employed would have paid this in. So again, 2023, you would have paid 5.95% up to $66,600. So if you make more than $66,600, currently in 2023, you don't pay CPP on any income above that threshold, but up to that point, 66,600, you will pay CPP. Now again, that's only for people, Canadians, above 18, and that make more than $3,500. So the most you can pay into CPP in 2023 would have been $3,867. And you get that number by taking 66,600, the YMPE, the most you can pay in, minus the 3,500 times 5.95%. So if you're a higher income earner, this year you would have paid $3,867.50 into CPP and your employer would have paid the same. So a substantial amount going into CPP to give you that benefit down the road. Now in 2024, that rate, the 5.95 doesn't change. We've now hit kind of the maximum rate on YMP. Now YMP is yearly maximum pensionable earnings. And that's saying CPP contributions are paid up to that point. That's kind of the threshold, threshold number one, that you pay regular CPP, that 5.95%. In 2024, that threshold is gonna bump from 66,600 up to 68,500. And that number will increase every year with infl inflation indexing and all of that. So it's calculated every single year to see what that increase will be. Now the big change for 2024 is a secondary CPP payment. And that is for higher income earners, people over that YMPE, the $68,500. There's now a CPP two that you need to pay in. That second threshold has a term that's called Y-A-M-P-E, and it stands for Years Additional Maximum Pensionable Earnings. So you'll see that once in a while, Y-A-M-P-E. So Years Additional Maximum Pensionable Earnings. And what that is, is it will affect people that are making over that threshold, the 68,500. So as far as CPP contributions go, how does it affect you? How much more are you going to pay in? For 2024, that YMPE, threshold or ceiling is going to be 7% above YMPE, the 68,500. So for 2024, 7%. For 2025, it's going to increase 
to 14%, so a bigger bump. So again, we're kind of scaling up into this whole CPP 2.0, we'll call it. Now, what's the actual dollar effect for you? So in 2024, again, any income between 68,500 and 73,200, you're going to pay into this CPP2. And if we look at a rate, it's going to cost you $188. It's going to cost your employer also $188. So again, this increase for 2024, it's not massive, it's a small amount, but still $188 that you're contributing to CPP. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, this is not money that you're paying in because CPP is underfunded and we got to get it caught up. No, no, the whole idea of this is for younger workers, it's going to be, if you're kind of paying into this as a younger worker building up, your CPP down the road, because you've paid more into it, could be double what it would have been otherwise. So this is something, it's an enhancement to your future CPP contribution uh, and benefit down the road. Now this is a good thing in theory because if we can rely you know, on CPP pool funding a lot of retirement income in retirement, it takes a lot of the pressure off of social security systems and all of that kind of stuff where the government you know, has to kind of step in and, and fund a lot of these support systems. So the more that we can provide for retirees down the road, the better. Now, this comes at a cost to you, the employer uh, and the employee, but I think the net benefit is good. And I think this overall has been well thought through and I think it's going to be a good solution for down the road. Now, how does it affect you though if you're a bit older or closer to or maybe already in retirement? So the CPP enhancement will only affect you if you've contributed, put money in to CPP from 2019 onward. So if you're someone that's been retired for a bit or have not been paying into CPP, this enhancement won't affect you at all. But if you've made any contributions 2019 or past, it will slightly affect you and if you're already taking CPP, this has nothing to do with you. It will not affect you. You've not put more money into CPP. You will not get more money out of it. It won't affect you at all. But for those of you, especially if you're younger, like a lot of you watching our videos are close to retirement. Maybe you're looking at taking CPP pretty soon. You have kids, you have grandkids that are starting to build out and they pay into CPP. They have no idea what it is, how it works, all of that, make sure you help educate them. And we actually have a financial masterclass 2.0 that we're launching here on Black Friday. Um, you'll see more about that uh, on our marketing campaign here, but basically the 2.0 is going to, we've redone all the videos, content, all of that, and it's really geared for that kind of 20 to 45 year old market. And there's content, downloads, videos, a whole bunch of stuff just to give you the financial basics and foundation to make sure you understand things like CPP. RSP, first home savings account, all of these things that matter when you're in that kind of building stage, 20 to 45 year old. So if you know someone in that stage, we're gonna be having a Black Friday sale, all new content and an all new price and the price will knock your socks off. So stay tuned for that. Lastly, I wanna give an example of someone that's making a good income, $120,000, could be 100,000, anything over above that CPP2 number. So let's say they're making $120,000. Um, their base contribution uh, for 2024 is going to be $3,867. And again, that is 5.95% up to that 68,500 threshold. Now, above that, they're gonna pay the additional $188. So total CPP contributions for someone making over that threshold, the CPP2 threshold of 73,200 will pay in $4,055. So as you walk into 2024 and wondering, okay, well, my income is $75,000 a year. That means that you're going to pay into CPP $4,055 and your employer will also pay the same. Now, if you're self-employed, you'll be paying double that. So again, this is a conversation you should have with both your financial planner and your accountant to see like what makes the most sense as far as taking a salary or do you take dividends? And again, I won't cover that in this video, that's a whole nother topic, but a conversation you wanna have. I'll say this on that topic, is that a lot of self-employed individuals that we do plans for, they never paid into CPP. So they always took a dividend and avoided CPP because they didn't wanna pay into that. But now they've hit retirement and maybe their business didn't do as well, things didn't go as well, and they didn't take that money that they would have paid into CPP, which is about 12%, right? 5.95 times two, plus this enhancement now is a bit more, they should have been taking that 12% and saving it and doing their own thing, but they didn't, right? They did whatever else with it. And so they hit retirement and they're not in a good financial position. So even if you're self-employed, 
really consider paying into CPP, even though you're paying both sides of it in, because it is kind of a good fallback just in case things go sideways in your business and your savings, whatever it is. So it is a good fallback. So for all of you that are still working, paying into CPP, expect, especially if you're a higher income earner, expect to pay a little bit more to CPP. But again, it's CPP too, it's enhancement that will also enhance the benefit you get in retirement.